a very warm welcome. You're watching Realty Buzz with me, Mansi Dave. Realty Buzz is all about the latest happenings in the world of real estate sector. And we give you the latest updates on all the emerging trends in the real estate market. Coming on to the top stories, recession, inflation, haunt real estate. Steep correction in Delhi and Mumbai in the late 90s had spurred the demand. This could happen again. The real estate has been hit by twin challenges of growth, recession and high inflation. This double whammy has reduced demand for both commercial and residential real estate. At the same time, realtors have failed to curtail supply. There is unoccupied real estate, offices, residential complexes, malls scattered across the country and there are unfinished projects in the pipeline. In almost all urban areas, 10 to 20% of commercial space lies unoccupied. Oversupply in residential units is worse. At the same time, there is a shortage of residential units at the middle to lower end of the spectrum. At the high end in Delhi NCR, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad and Kolkata, residential oversupply is huge. A recent report by Knight Frank claims NCR home sales are down by 50% in January to June versus January to June 2014. About 1,89,000 units are estimated unsold in NCR region. While the report estimates that it could take 19 quarters to clear that inventory, some of which is three years old. The inventory might shift quicker if sentiments revive. But things could also slow even more. Typically, residential property is financed by long-term, floating rate mortgages. Demand is higher when growth is high and inflation is low. Real estate in India is very expensive relative to per capita income. Given oversupply, it seems normal to drop price to stimulate demand. Prices have indeed eased down by 25 to 30 percent, but deeper corrections may be needed. There are some signs of revival in residential markets. Housing finance companies such as HDFC, LIC Housing, Divan Housing and India World's Housing also double-digit volume growth and double-digit rise in profitability in April to June compared to April to June 2014. However, one quarter could be a flash in the pan. Also, even if it's sustained, it might not be enough to clear given quantum of supply. There are unusual facets to the real estate market. A significant component of price is almost always black. For a middle-class salaried person, real estate purchase involves converting post-tax rupees into black money. The black component means the commitment to purchase is higher than apparent if one only considers white, official prices. There has been much talk of a crackdown on black money. This has spooked the middle class to an extent and made it a little reluctant to pay high black components. That could be a further dampener for reality markets. People pay premiums to own and this is one reason why rental yield is absurdly low. In practice, rental yield are much lower than this thumb rule. The difference can be attributed to two related things. One is the premium paid by buyers for the comfort of ownership and the other is the expectation of capital gains. This equation could be changing. Low rental yields make it possible to enjoy better accommodation by renting. For young, upwardly mobile persons with aspirations, acquiring a home is not such a high priority. Many of this generation want to go abroad and they might not want a commitment to paying off an unoccupied property. Until the early 2000s, both residential housing and commercial real estate was in short supply and that guaranteed high prices. Banks started offering floating rate mortgages with affordable equated monthly installment to retail customers a decade ago. Real estate firms went public and raised money from stock markets only after 2007. The resulting boom between 2007 and 2011 drove prices into orbit. It also triggered the current supply overhang. Some projects have been stalled for years, other projects are complete but unoccupied. Interest rates remain high. Logic suggests that real estate market is due to further steep corrections, at least in high-end urban areas. That should mean already battered real estate developers will take a further beating. But although logic leads to that conclusion, the real estate market doesn't necessarily work on logic due to many distortions. The June quarter uptick in mortgage volumes might mean it is bottoming out. On the other hand, it is worth bearing in mind that there were steep correction in Delhi to Mumbai real estate in the late 90s and mortgage volumes rose. The lower prices stimulated demand. This sort of market action could happen again. Here we take a short break. We will be back in a while. You stay tuned. With a very hot investment proposition, they do have their own leanings and predictions when it comes to where to invest. Hello and welcome back after the break. Coming on to the next story, NRIs, I Indian Real Estate again. 
The urge to ensure a better standard of living for themselves and their families back home has led countless Indians to migrate to countries offering attractive work pay equations. Let's take a look at it in detail. Over the past few decades, the urge to ensure a better standard of living for themselves and families back home has led countless Indians to migrate to countries offering attractive work pay equations. This income generating objective is the highest common factor and through NRI's ties with their country of birth sometimes erode to a certain extent. The willingness to turn a decent profit on investment back home does not. The Indian royalty sector as a whole, namely across the residential, retail, hospitality and commercial verticals is slated to grow at 30% over the next decade, attaining a market size of around $180 billion by 2020. However, the investment opportunity lies less in the Indian real estate sector's speed of growth than in its overall dynamism. As such, it has been time and again vouchsafed that long-term investment into Indian royalty pay off very well, indeed as long as sound investment decisions have been taken. Talking about the advantages to NRI, NRIs today are keenly aware that Indian real estate once again presents them with a very hot investment proposition. They do have their own leanings and predictions when it comes to where to invest. Generally, the NRI community prefers to invest in their state of origin, primarily Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Delhi NCR. However, since residential inventory has piled up in a two major cities of Delhi and Mumbai, investors are currently very well placed to find good bargains in this market. As most developers there are offering discounts and attractive financial schemes too. Well, the advantages that the UAE-based NRIs have is that they earn in Gulf currencies that have traded strongly against the Indian national rupee. This factor offsets a part of house cost already. However, the rupee is bound to strengthen further and the advantageous difference between the currencies will reduce as the Indian economy grows under a stable government at the center. If we talk about the current scenario, Indian developers have had to wake up to certain immutable market realities over the last two years. In many cities, they have misjudged where the actual demand is and how much buyers, including NRIs, are willing to spend on their first or second homes. This has resulted in worrisome levels of supply overhang of larger configuration apartments. Real estate developers are now becoming quite serious about right sizing and right pricing their products to make them attractive to a larger cross-section of customers. In fact, Smaller, better design and more efficient homes are very much in evidence when we study the project launches in 2015. Selective corrections are already happening in some of the overpriced pockets of India's larger cities as the trend gathers momentum. We will start seeing a faster sales velocity in the stagnated supply of larger configurations. Townships are becoming a lot more prevalent. Since this is becoming the residential option of choice for many city dwellers looking for a better lifestyle for their families. The supply pipeline for luxury home project is now slowing down in reaction to the slow demand dynamic of these offerings. Coming on to the pricing trends, residential property prices have plateaued both in Delhi and Mumbai. Good returns can be expected only if one's investment horizon is of three years or above, in which case annualized returns of 10% can be expected from the third year on. Sluggish sales, especially in the luxury segment, have led developers to offer several attractive financial schemes. The advice for NRI investors, for NRIs who are on the verge of retiring and planning to do so in India, this is the right time to invest. Social and civic infrastructure is being ramped up in most of the larger cities, which means that more hospitals, schools and shopping malls are well in improved connectivity and availability of utilities, are resulting in higher ease of living, equally a higher quality retired life. With this, we come to an end of this episode. Keep sending in your suggestions and queries at contact us at optimismedia.com or you can call us on 919222-9222-88 or 1-800-3000-5191. I'll be back with more news and buzz. Till then, keep watching Spin TV. Goodbye. Take care.